afternoon. Reports from Northern Thailand say at least four boys, possibly six, from the group that have been trapped in a flooded cave have been brought out. A major operation involving international divers and elite members of the Thai Navy has been taking place to free the 12 boys and their football coach. They became stranded almost a fortnight ago when the tunnels became waterlogged by monsoon rain. Our correspondent, Nick Beek, is on the scene for us. In fact, Nick, I believe that you're outside one of the hospitals that has been put on standby. Is that the Chiang Rai Hospital? Absolutely, yeah. This is the main hospital in the Chiang Rai region. And in the past 20 minutes or so, we've seen two ambulances race into this hospital. We don't know who exactly is inside, but we know that three ambulances left the cave complex, which is probably about an hour away from here. So they race along the road to this point. I can tell you our best source at the moment for what is happening is probably the Thai Navy SEALs. And on their Facebook page, they have been providing regular updates as to what's been happening. Remember, they are the people who've been in the cave. They're the ones who've been taking videos and posting it of the boys who have been trapped. They say that four boys at this stage have been brought to safety uh, from the cave complex an hour from here. So that is the word from them. Lots of other reports whirling around at the moment. We can't say for sure um, whether they are accurate, but certainly what we know is two ambulances here, and as I say, four boys brought to safety according to the unit, the elite unit, which has been spearheading this operation. Uh, Nick, what are the primary concerns for the children's health as they're brought to the hospitals? Do we know what sort of plan has been put in place? Well, the officials here, the docs and nurses, haven't been speaking publicly about what they have been planning here, but clearly they've had some time to prepare for this. They know exactly how many people they need to be treating, potentially. Also, remember that ever since the boys have been found at the start of last week, they've had a doctor with them who's been able to assess their medical condition on an hourly basis, you would imagine. We heard the officials here in this part of northern Thailand say this morning that the boys were strong enough, they were mentally fit to embark on this rescue attempt so clearly a decision was made to go with this relative break in the weather to try and embark on a successful rescue so in, in terms of how the, indiv the individual boys will be treated we haven't got that information at the moment but clearly they know the ages of the boys their conditions over the past week or so and so you'd imagine there is a tailor-made plan for each of these young footballers as hopefully they all emerge to safety and they're treated here and ultimately reunited with their families and that helicopters, we understand, Nick, that helicopters had been put on standby. That was one of the plans in terms of getting those boys to hospital as soon as possible. Why is it then that they've used ambulances? Well, I think there's probably one for the medical teams. They would have been doing dynamic risk assessments, as, as they call it. We imagine that the boys probably were assessed after the first and hardest part of this rescue attempt. That was the stumbling block, really. The caves are so narrow, flooded in parts, and they were really concerned that they'd be able to bring the boys safely through these winding, very narrow passageways and corridors. They were probably ass assessed after that first point and a decision made that they would continue with the rest of the rescue operation. As for helicopters, clearly they're a much quicker option, but if a decision was made that bringing them here by road was the best option, they've gone with that clearly. We, we did see a helicopter take off earlier from the site, not yet clear who was in that and what sort of role that was playing in this rescue operation. And finally, Nick, any indication that family members are attending the hospital? Well, in the time that we've been here, we've not seen any family members. That's not to say that they aren't here. We're a distance away, as you can see. You can see the police, uh, other officials waving traffic through a busy part of town here. If family members are here, they're being kept at a distance in a similar way to the way they were kept at a respectful distance from the media, the volunteers, the well-wishers at the cave complex, which is about an hour from here. You'd imagine that they'd be the first to know any sort of developments in this rescue operation. We know they've 
been consulted throughout. They were told that they were going to embark on this rescue plan. And so if they are here now, they will be given the latest information. And in time, of course, that will be fed to us either through the elite Navy SEAL unit or through the government or certainly the local government uh, in this part of Northern Thailand who've been keeping us up to date on developments. OK, Nick, we're going to leave it there for now. That's Nick Beek at the uh, Chiang Rai District Hospital where we believe um, the first of the boys, um, early numbers said two, but we believe at least four have now exited that cave system. Um, we believe they have been taken, or that is one of the hospitals that has been put um, on standby.